Welcome to the Savvy Investor, where it's our job to help you be secure in any economy. Do you know about your silent partner in your retirement accounts? Almost every one of us have one, and they want 25% of your money. Today on The Savvy Investor, how to keep the IRS out of your IRA. Welcome to The Savvy Investor. Each week, The Savvy Investor helps viewers just like you create and grow wealth, protect and preserve it, and distribute it in the most tax-efficient manner while alive and after you passed. Our goal is to make you a better informed investor that hopefully leads to better results, but certainly less risk along the way. You can have financial security in any economy. Today is the day you can take control of your financial future and eliminate worry about your retirement forever. And now, The Savvy Investor, with your host, Michael Kinnett. For years, our employers and the government have been telling us over and over again how important it is to save for our retirement. They even provided matching funds for every dollar we put away. They gave us a tax break for saving for our future. Well, here it is, 30 years later, you have managed to accumulate quite a nest egg, some larger than others, but you have saved for your retirement. You're to be congratulated for this. Now comes the silent partner. Remember all those years that the IRS gave us a tax break for putting money into our retirement accounts? Every time you put a dollar away, you were able to deduct that dollar from your income taxes. It was a great deal while we were putting it away. They really emphasized the tax breaks and the matching. They didn't tell us about the IRS being a partner in our accounts, did they? What do I mean by that? Well, now that you're ready to start taking money out of your accounts, doesn't the IRS want their share? That's right. They gave you a tax break for putting away a dollar. Now that it's grown to 100, they want 20, 30, or even 40% or more of it. Doesn't sound like such a great deal after all, does it? If you had to do it over again, would you do it the same way? Today on The Savvy Investor, we're going to talk about retirement accounts, specifically IRAs and Roth IRAs, how they work, which is better for you, and I'll give you a hint of what's to come. The answer is, it depends. But first, we're going to take a look at the news. From Yahoo Finance, we have a great article. It's called Roth IRA versus the 401k and what's right for you. You know, when you're driving down the road to retirement, it's critical to choose the best vehicle. And for many savers, it may be time for an upgrade. Those who have made the savvy commitment to save at least 10% of their salary should consider the features and benefits of a Roth 401k and a Roth IRA. When it comes to retirement savings, too many people are stuck with their first vehicle. You know, my first car was this 1972 white Mercury Marquis. It was a big old boat with roll down windows and poor gas mileage, but it got me to and from work and college. But after several years of service, you know, it's time to shop for new options. Just because you've chosen to drove one retirement vehicle for a while doesn't mean you have to finish the ride with it. Now from Charles Schwab, we have another great piece, investment expenses. We all have a silent partner when it comes to our investments. Uncle Sam insists on his cut of our investment income and capital gains, even though he doesn't share in any of the risks. And finally, from CPA Advantage, they have a fantastic piece on who inherits your IRA, the IRS or your heirs. You know, you might be surprised to learn that Uncle Sam, in his guise as a tax man, could take 35 to 80 percent of your IRA assets if a multi-generational IRA, also known as a stretch IRA, is not adopted. Remember when you set up that tax-deferred retirement account? You made the tax man your silent partner, agreeing to pay him the taxes sooner or later. Unless your retirement plan is set up correctly, the United States government may be the primary beneficiary of your IRA, but it doesn't have to be that way. We all understand that we have to save for our futures, but what if you've already saved and the future is now? Nobody's gonna look out for you better than yourself, but the devil is in the details. How you save for the future and the type of accounts you use will have a significant impact, not only on how much money you can save, but how much you're gonna pay in tax and how your heirs may or may not inherit their accounts. If you've already arrived here, you have saved and are either in retirement or ready for it, you have to understand about your silent partner and how to protect not only yourself, but your heirs. Choosing the right account is perhaps the most important thing you can do with your retirement dollars. You're watching The Savvy Investor and we'll be right back. If you're in retirement or retiring in the next three to five years, you must read Michael Kinnett's best-selling book, Surviving the Perfect Storm. Best-selling author and National Quill Award winner, Michael Kinnett's Surviving the Perfect Storm is a must-read to prepare for your golden years. This amazing book can be yours absolutely free, but you must call 800-787-SAVVY. Supplies are limited, so be one of the first 25 callers to receive your free limited edition autograph copy of Surviving the Perfect Storm. Call 800-787-SAVVY. 
Join the host of the nationally syndicated TV series, The Savvy Investor, and best-selling author Michael Kinnett for this very important, life-changing workshop. Michael and his team of advisors from across the country have been helping families create and live the retirement they envision by carefully crafting a retirement income plan that can withstand any financial crisis. Michael will give you the tools you need to make sound investment choices and help you prepare for your golden years. At this workshop, you will learn more than just where to invest your money. Michael will also share tax strategies that can save you and your family thousands in tax dollars. You will learn important estate planning techniques that can help you avoid the high cost of a nursing home, as well as reduce or completely eliminate any estate tax. Now, you can join him in person for these very informative workshops. They could be the answer to creating a safe and secure retirement you deserve. Call 800-787-SAVVY to see if you qualify to attend one of these workshops with best-selling author Michael Connett, host of The Savvy Investor. Welcome back to The Savvy Investor. Today we're talking about retirement accounts and we're going to focus on IRAs and Roth IRAs for today's show. But keep in mind that many of the lessons learned today are applicable to employer-sponsored plans like your 401k, your 403b, and the TSP. Now, IRAs and Roth IRAs are great tools for saving for retirement, but both come with different and distinct rules. To help us understand how these retirement tools work, we're joined by Jason Silverberg. Jason is Vice President of Financial Planning at Financial Advantage Associates. Jason, welcome to the SAP Investor. Thanks for having me. So, so you know, we're, we're talking about IRAs and retirement plans, and I, I kind of want to discuss a little bit about the history, how we got sure. from from company plans to the idea of even needing an IRA. Sure. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's been a long process, but over the last 40 years or so, uh, you know, the the old school mentality was you work for a company, you're loyal to that company, and uh, in in return for that loyalty the company would provide a uh, steady stream of income to a you, pension. a pension in retirement for you and your spouse uh, so that you can live live on. Um, but uh, loyalties shifted over the last few years and, you know, last 30 years and, um, you know, uh, people are now jumping from position to position and in return, companies are now changing their benefits packages to instead of defining the benefit with a pension, they're defining a contribution with a 401k and they're, they're providing a benefit um, for investors to put money in, shifting the risk uh, from, uh, you know, the liability for them to provide that stream of income to now shifting the risk to the employee to now put their money in and, and whatever they get when, and when they retire is whatever they get. The onus yeah. is on them, the onus whatever grows them. them. Exactly. So, so really, the, the, the old pension plans defined benefit mm -hmm. because it really said this is how much you're going to get. Mm -hmm. And then the defined contribution, which is the 401ks, is the company basically saying, look, you can put X amount of money into it, and whatever it grows to, it's you. Exactly. And they may or may not give you a match, and certainly we saw a demise of matching yep. you know, in the last four or five years with companies struggling to stay alive, or at least struggling to make sure that there's profit for the, the, the shareholders. Exactly. So, so one of the things as we transitioned, is, as, as companies transition the, the responsibility from defined benefit plans, pension plans, mm -hmm. to IRAs, to the... the the, the 401ks, there were tax incentives involved. Yes, yes. So uh, when you have a 401k or an IRA, the money that goes in is generally pre-tax. So if I make $100,000 and I put $10,000 in into my 401k, then I'm only taxed on $90,000. Right, so, so just the incentives there, you, no, no, but it does create that silent partner that I talked about. It does. So w when you take the money out in retirement of, from the 401k or the IRA, it is all taxable. Right. Because you got the deduction up And front. the IRS wants their share. Exactly. And they force you to take it out. And we all know this. They force you to take it out at 70 yep. and a half, yep. even if you don't want the money. Now, you know, we talk about 401ks, but really it's a whole, the whole genre of re company-sponsored retirement plans. Uh -huh. So we're talking about 401ks, 403bs, uh, the TSP, 457s, the whole, the whole gamut of them, yep. right? So let's, let's talk a little bit more about you have a company-sponsored plan. Mm -hmm and you have an IRA, mm -hmm. we've always said if you're not at your employer anymore, your money's not there anymore either. Exactly, yeah. So, uh, you know, when you leave your job, there's generally four things that you can do with your money. You can leave it at the old job. You can uh, roll it to your new job, presuming that your new job has a 401k and that you qualify for it. Uh, you can put in your checking account, which probably Always not bad. a good idea. Always bad. Or you can roll that into an IRA. And, and there's a lot of great opportunities with IRAs, um, rolling them into IRAs. Um, 
Certainly, you have a wider variety of investment options to choose from with the 401k. Right, 10 or 12. Yeah. And an IRA almost unlimited for better or for worse. Exactly, yep. And then, you know, you can also work with an investment advisor to help you manage those funds in an IRA versus the 401k. Um, and then also legacy, leaving that IRA as a legacy. Uh, you know, there are certain things called stretch IRAs where you can stretch the de deferral of an IRA over the span of not just your lifetime, but your beneficiary's lifetime as well. And, and you know, with, with technology being the way it is, sometimes it feels like you can, you know, if you left it in the 401k, you can still do what you need to do, but there's a comfort level being able to sit across the table and, and actually have a conversation with somebody. Exactly. And the other thing that I like to point out to people is that, you know, in an IRA, at least you'll know the fees that you're paying, at least you have the opportunity to know the fees. Mm -hmm. And with the 401ks, they have done such an incredible job burying those fees and hiding them. There's a great article out of uh, Forbes uh, that talks about, you know, you're losing 20 to 30% off the top on the 401k. So for me, it's a no-brainer. Get your money out of there no matter yeah. what. Yeah. Um, now, we, we've laid out how these IRAs work. We've talked about some of the pros and cons here. Certainly we understand that IRAs are an option for retirement planning and there are clear advantages of moving your 401k and employer plans into your IRA. Now, when we come back, we're going to switch gears a little bit. I'm going to talk about tax deferred and tax free Roth IRAs and, and tax free money is probably the greatest thing since sliced bread. We're also going to take a look at some viewer email. You're watching The Savvy Investor and we'll be right back. Join the host of the nationally syndicated TV series, The Savvy Investor, and best-selling author Michael Kinnett for this very important, life-changing workshop. Michael and his team of advisors from across the country have been helping families create and live the retirement they envision by carefully crafting a retirement income plan that can withstand any financial crisis. Michael will give you the tools you need to make sound investment choices and help you prepare for your golden years. At this workshop, you will learn more than just where to invest your money. Michael will also share tax strategies that can save you and your family thousands in tax dollars. You will learn important estate planning techniques that can help you avoid the high cost of a nursing home, as well as reduce or completely eliminate any estate tax. Now, you can join him in person for these very informative workshops. They could be the answer to creating a safe and secure retirement you deserve. Call 800-787-SAVVY to see if you qualify to attend one of these workshops with best-selling author Michael Kinnett, host of The Savvy Investor. If you're in retirement or retiring in the next three to five years, you must read Michael Kinnett's best-selling book, Surviving the Perfect Storm. Best-selling author and National Quill Award winner, Michael Kinnett's Surviving the Perfect Storm is a must-read to prepare for your golden years. This amazing book can be yours absolutely free, but you must call 800-787-SAVVY. Supplies are limited, so be one of the first 25 callers to receive your free limited edition autograph copy of Surviving the Perfect Storm. Call 800-787-SAVVY. Welcome back. During the first half of the show, we talked about traditional IRAs. We learned about how the tax deferral works and the fact that they are taxable down the road and quite frankly, you have a silent partner in your IRA with the IRS. We also learned that there may be some very strong reasons to move your old 401k plans into an IRA. The ability to sit down and talk with an advisor, investment options, and quite frankly, there are some strong tax advantages for your heirs. But I wanna move on to the Roth IRA, the tax-free version of an IRA. And you know what? From an investment point of view, there is very little that is better than tax-free money. Now, before we go there, we're gonna answer some viewer mail. Bethany from Omaha writes us and says that she normally can't itemize deductions on her tax return, but she recently met with her accountant and he suggested that she bundle her deductions. What does this mean and how does it work? Bethany, this is commonly known as bunching. And basically what you'd be doing, and let's take your property taxes for instance. Let's assume that you wanted to pay both your, your next two years of property taxes all in this year. So in June of 2013, you're gonna pay your 2013 property taxes, and in December of 2013, you're going to pay your 2014 property taxes. This would allow you to use both years' deductions in this year as an itemized deduction. See your accountant to find out what other deductions can be bunched. Rachel in Philadelphia asks us, my sister told me that I should move my old 401k into an annuity with her broker, but she's heard Susie Orman say that variable annuities are bad. Good or bad? 
Well, I think it's important to know before we answer this question what we're meaning by annuity, because there are various types of annuities. Uh, first of all, there's the most common form of annuity, which is an immediate annuity. Basically, you giving your, your money to an insurance company in return for a lifetime income stream. Then there's deferred annuities. Deferred annuities are basically where you, during the, when you're in your accumulation phase, when you've got money invested and you're looking to grow it. Uh, typically, they're going to grow tax deferred, and there are two various types of deferred annuities, or three various types of, of deferred annuities. One would be the fixed annuity, very similar to a CD, where they're pay paying a flat fixed rate for a, for a substantial period of time. Second is an indexed annuity. It's also a fixed annuity, so it protects you against market loss, but you don't participate fully in the market's upside. Lastly, there's a variable annuity. A variable annuity allows you to participate fully in the upside and the downside of whatever the equity markets do. So, is an annuity right for you? Well, there's no way to answer that question without getting a heck of a lot more information. Here's what I can tell you about annuities. Annuities aren't good, annuities aren't bad, annuities just are. They are part of a well-defined financial plan when used properly. It's the same as it would be with a stock or a mutual fund or a bond. Unless they're used properly, they can either hurt you or help you. So one of the things that I would highly encourage you to do is sit down with the financial advisor, explore the opportunity of annuities and lifetime income guarantees, and understand the various forms of annuities that you could use. Thanks, Mark, for all the great advice and answers. We're going to take a quick break now. When we come back, we'll resume our interview. Remember when life was simpler, when things didn't move quite so fast, and the world didn't seem so complex? Remember that? We do. And as the world around us has continued to speed up, becoming more complicated, more and more uncertain, we have managed to keep things simple, providing sound, easy-to-understand financial advice and proven solutions for the road ahead. From investments and insurance to tax reduction strategies, estate planning solutions, and guaranteed retirement income you cannot outlive, we're your single point of contact, a single call, a voice you recognize well, and a partner who will be by your side for the entire journey. We can't stop the world around us, but we can help ensure you're prepared for what's to come. For a special free guide entitled 10 Things to Know About Retirement Income, simply contact us today. You made it. Years of hard work, investing, planning, and now you're here. The long-awaited reward you spent a lifetime looking forward to. But what now? After years of growing a nest egg, now you want to manage it. Use it to fund your dreams. Make sure it lasts as long as you need it. And make sure it leaves a legacy for those you love. So what do you do? Wall Street continues to be uncertain. And many conservative options have all but dropped through the floor. How do you maintain opportunities for growth without risking what you can't afford to lose? That's where we come in. We are financial professionals. From investments and insurance products to tax reduction strategies, estate planning solutions, and guaranteed retirement income you cannot outlive, you've worked a lifetime to get here. Let us help you enjoy it to the fullest. For a special free guide entitled 10 Things to Know About Retirement Income, simply contact us today. So what uh, your emails? Yeah, so great questions. I like the way your experts handle those, yeah. Fantastic. Sure. Um, so you know, we try here each and every week to answer your questions so that you can make smart money decisions. You know, we only scratch the surface here and you deserve more. All our experts appear all over the country helping you make smart money choices. And IRA planning is just one of the topics we cover. Sit down and talk with them, but make sure for today you take notes so that you can make the right IRA planning choices for you and your family. So. When we left the first half of the show, we were talking about IRAs and the whole idea that they're deductible and you pay tax later. Let's talk about tax-free money because, sure. you know, there's almost nothing better out there than tax-free money, and that's using the Roth IRAs. So let's, let's talk about how, the origins of it and how it works for investors. Sure, yeah, I'm in love with the Roth IRA. Uh, Roth IRAs came out in 1997. They were designed to stimulate uh, investors to put money into retirement accounts. An investor can put their after-tax dollars in, meaning they do not get that tax deduction 
similar to the non-deductible IRA that we talked about earlier. So you're not getting a deduction putting the money in? Right. Okay. It grows tax deferred. You won't get that interest uh, 1099 each year. And then when you take the money out, if you take it out for a qualified uh, expense or at retirement, uh, you would be able to get that money out completely tax-free. So that's a huge, huge advantage. And, and there's no real restrictions, again, on what you invest in. No restrictions, yeah. You can buy stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs. You can keep it in a money market account if you really wanted to, but that kind of defeats the purpose of the The, the opportunity growth. for growth. Exactly. Right, right, right. Um, but yeah, it could be diversified. It could be in a mutual fund, whatever you'd like. Yeah. So, you know, I get clients come in and want to know about owning real estate inside uh -huh. there, buying gold inside uh -huh. there. And, and while I'm not a big proponent of real estate inside, IRAs and Roth IRAs, certainly that's a way to, you, you know, if you have enough money in them that you can flip real estate in a, yeah. a very tax advantaged way, some very cool things you can do with yeah. Roth IRAs. Now let's talk a little bit about how that comes into planning down the road. So we sure. put money into it today, mm -hmm. uh, it's growing tax deferred, and now there's some rules in that, so what, what the rules for, for gaining access to that money? Yeah, so there's a five year rule or 59 and a half, which means that if I hit 59 and a half, and have held the account for longer than five years, that means that I can take my money out tax-free. Tax but if I put my money in at 60, and I can't really take it out the next year, the gains tax-free, I have to wait a full five years from when I started the account and made the first contribution for me to be able to get my money, my gains out tax-free. You can always take the principal out tax-free, it's and the I, gains. And I think that's important for people yeah. to understand is that you have the opportunity, if you put money away into the Roth, because you've already paid tax on it, mm -hmm. the Roth is really a kind of, uh, unlike the traditional IRA, that if you have non-deductible money and deductible money in the traditional, you take it out on a pro rata basis. Right. With the Roth, you actually can dictate and say, I'm taking principal first, yep. so that if you need it out before that five-year period, there is ways to extract money without tapping into exactly. that. Now, you still have the before 59 and a half, 10 percent penalty rule. Correct. So people need to pay attention to that. Correct. Now, what are some of the things that you like to see clients use Roth IRAs for? Because it's not just for retirement planning. There's other. Sure. Yeah. So Roth IRAs could be used for, um, you know, college savings or, um, you know, buying your first home. Typically, I don't like to see those uh, Roth IRAs used for those purposes because uh, you, you lose some of the the, um, the deferral over the long period of time. Um, you know, but certainly, you know, they are available if you need it for a hardship to take the money out for college or um, for your first home. Um, but I'm usually seeing people put the money in, letting it grow till retirement, and then taking that money out in retirement. And what we like about them is that for people, you know, a lot of people, once you get to 70 and a half, yeah. with the traditional IRAs, you're forced to take the money out. Exactly. With the Roth, the IRS just doesn't care because you do not have a silent partner in your Roth like right. you do with the traditional. Right. So we like it for that purpose as well. And, and while I think there are other, better legacy tools available, mm -hmm. if you're going to leave money to your heirs, leaving it to them in the Roth IRA is certainly... So yeah. just real quickly, sure. conversions. People yeah. ask us all the time. The conversions have become widely popular over the last few years. Since 2010, the, uh, the government uh, took away the income restrictions on who can convert their money over. So from a traditional IRA to a Roth. From a traditional to a Roth. So if I have money in a traditional, I can convert that to a Roth, pay the taxes in that year so that I can just pretend like I put that money in the Roth and that money will just continue to grow into retirement tax-free. So that's a huge, huge advantage to a lot of people right now. So take money from traditional, you take it out, you put it into the Roth, you pay the tax. Yep. It grows tax-deferred, tax-free if you do it correctly. Exactly never have to take it out again, go to the heirs. Yeah, and a lot of, there's a little bit of a misconception that Roth conversions are only good for younger people. But I would argue that they're really good for a lot of people, many people. Even if you're in your 50s, you could do a Roth conversion and let that money sit and grow for 20, 30 years and use that money to the, for the last half of your retirement years or use it as a legacy for, your, for the next generation. Um, but the bottom line is it just takes planning. It does, and, yeah. And that's what you should be really doing is you should be sitting down and, and planning with your advisor or even if you're doing it on your own to sit down and, and really figure out the pros and cons of which one to use, how to use it, when to use it. Exactly. Now we need to take a quick break here. Uh, when we come back, we're going to do our takeaways. Uh, Jason has given us some really useful information and I want to highlight the things you need to know from today's show. You're watching The Savvy Investor. We'll be right back. Like any tool, there's the right tool for the right job and a wrong tool for the wrong job. 
We've just scratched the surface here, and you'll want to know more about how today's conversation might or might not fit your needs. Ask about fees, surrender charges, market risk, interest rate risks, how the guarantees work, liquidity, and much more. Remember, the right tool for the right job. Join the host of the nationally syndicated TV series, The Savvy Investor, and best-selling author Michael Kinnett for this very important, life-changing workshop. Michael and his team of advisors from across the country have been helping families create and live the retirement they envision by carefully crafting a retirement income plan that can withstand any financial crisis. Michael will give you the tools you need to make sound investment choices and help you prepare for your golden years. At this workshop, you will learn more than just where to invest your money. Michael will also share tax strategies that can save you and your family thousands in tax dollars. You will learn important estate planning techniques that can help you avoid the high cost of a nursing home, as well as reduce or completely eliminate any estate tax. Now, you can join him in person for these very informative workshops. They could be the answer to creating a safe and secure retirement you deserve. Call 800-787-SAVVY to see if you qualify to attend one of these workshops with best-selling author Michael Connett, host of The Savvy Investor. Today we were joined by Jason Silverberg of Financial Advantage Associates. Understanding how IRAs and Roth IRAs work is an important part of retirement planning and you need to use them correctly. Today Jason provided us with several important pieces of advice. First and foremost, he says move your old employer plans into an IRA. If you're no longer with your employer, your money shouldn't be there either. Second takeaway from today is you have a silent partner with the IRS. If you're not careful, when you start taking withdrawals from your IRA, you could be sharing that money with the IRS. With proper tax planning, there may be ways to fire your silent partner. And our third takeaway from today's show is that Roth IRAs, tax-free, is always good. You know, there's some really cool things in life. Sliced bread, DVRs, and tax-free money. The Roth IRA may be one of the best sources of tax-free money out there. Thank you, Jason, for joining us today and providing us with this valuable information about IRAs and Roth IRAs. If you'd like our free guide, IRAs, 11 Irreversible Mistakes People Make, call the number you see on your screen. It's a step-by-step -step guide to help you make smart choices about your money. Give us a call and we'll send out our guide to you at no cost. We'll see you, the Savvy Investor, next week.